This is Natural Powerlifting Radio. Deadlifts, chicken nuggets, video games. This is Check My Total, a powerlifting podcast with Timothy Payne and Andrew Henson. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Check My Total. And on this episode, me and Timmy are going to talk about some equipped powerlifting and uh, kind of what is equipped powerlifting, what what transferred from equipped lifting into raw powerlifting that some people try to imitate, even though they probably shouldn't, and things like that. Yeah. So like Andrew just said, there's a lot of things that come from the gear equipped world that you know, just doesn't translate when you're trying to be a raw lifter. And a lot of that really is in the bench press where most of those issues are, which I can think of a couple from, you know, deadlifting and squatting. But I think this episode will probably focus mostly on the bench press. Yeah, so like equip lifting for anyone that doesn't know, it's just a certain division of powerlifting where you wear these suits. Um, You know, most places do single ply now. Um, but then their multiply was really big, uh, back in the day. Uh, I would say in general, you know, raw lifting is bigger than equip lifting now. Uh, but there's, there's still quite a bit of equip lifting in like other countries like Europe and stuff. And then, you know, strongman has it all. Yeah, I think the boom of it was probably when we were still involved with it in the early 2000s. Gear, yeah. equipped lifting was huge. Yeah, everyone lifted equipped. So, yeah, it was these big old suits. You know, you get you get in these squat suits and, you know, people would have to, like, take a team of, like, NASCAR pit drivers to assemble you inside this bad boy. Yeah, another another name is supportive gear because when these these suits and shirts were originally created they were made for older masters lifters you know who had injuries or different problems so they could keep on lifting well people people figured out they could add you know 100 pounds to their bench press so everybody started jumping to this gear even when they weren't hurt or injured yeah because just like everything else in powerlifting if there's a way to increase your numbers, people are going to do it. Yep. So, um, so you know, like the bench press, for instance, people would, like, get in this this bench shirt, and, like, you would, like, pull your arms apart. You have to get people to help you in it. It's not just something you can, like, put on easily. But, yeah, well, the basically... First... No, go ahead. I was going to say, the first bench shirts were made out of the same material. Which I wanted to call everything canvas, but everything's not canvas. I guess. Uh, what what would you say that material is that shirts are and suits are made out of? Now or? Oh well, yeah, now, because it's pretty much the same. Uh, oh, I need to Google this. Uh, I forget what it's called. Let's see, bench press shirt. Man, this Titan one here is like hundred twenty dollars. Oh, let's see. Is it a blast shirt? Puri. Oh, yeah. No, that's Fury, one. not Puri. Fury. <laughs> With an F. Titan, Titan Fury. Whoa, let's see. In NXG plus fabric? That sounds like NXG. a brand name, like what they came up with themselves. Yeah. Anyways, these suits and stuff are made out of, you know, thick material. And some, which we we don't allow that in Iron Boy, what I'm about to say, we don't allow canvas. Because a lot of uh, squat suits are made out of canvas, but we don't allow that. But anyways, back to my original story or whatever. These uh, bench shirts used to be made with the same thick material all the way around. So the front of the shirt and the back of the shirt were the same material. Like Andrew was saying, it'd take, you know, three or four people just to pull you into one of these shirts. Nowadays, the front is just the bench shirt material, and the back is like a little thin mesh thing to where it makes it a little bit easier to slide into them. Yeah, yeah. There's There's also open back shirts, but we don't allow that 
your shirt has to be closed to, you know, the whole back is open. It's just like has a slit in it yep. to where it's, you know, not closed. Okay, so here, here's what here's what they're made of. Um, some combination of polyester, denim, or canvas. Is that was it denim? No, nah, because we don't allow that either. So I guess polyester. Yeah, I guess they're polyester. Okay. And uh, which USAPL doesn't allow that stuff either. I think it's it's mostly these multiply um, federations that allow the denim and the canvas. You know, like USPA yep. and that uh, where were the Cherokee boys lift? What was that? Or RPS? Yeah, RPS. Those kind of organizations. Multiply. So yep, that's uh, and, and these people that lift equip, um, obviously their training is a lot different. Uh, it's different. Is a different movement, and it's almost, it's the same, you're doing the same three movements in competition, but it's like the training is, like, totally different. And yeah. Other things to focus on. Like it's Which almost can, like it's a different sport. It really is, because it's not so much getting strong when you're wearing equipment. It's more learning how to get the most out of your suit. So you're more of a technician than you are actually trying to strength train. Which, don't get me wrong, these guys still have to train the parts that they're having to use. But, you know, 70% is probably still the suit doing it. Like, for example, the bench press, the suit takes your shoulders out of it. So as you come down with the bar... Your suit's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. It's like you're pulling a rubber band. And then once the once the bar is on your chest and you explode, that shirt will actually push it off of your chest until you're ready to lock it out with your triceps. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you're training raw, you're going to need your shoulders and your chest to where when you're wearing a bench shirt, you really just got to hammer your top end, your triceps and that lockout. Yep, and that that's one thing that that um some raw lifters got get the idea they because they hear all these strong people and these equipped lifters talk about how they don't really do a lot of shoulder work and then so raw lifters will be like oh well I guess I don't need to do a ton of shoulder work well it's because they're wearing the shirt they don't need their shoulders they don't need them as much as you do so yeah. Yeah, your backside needs to be as strong as your front side on, well, everything. But a lot of people neglect their backside when it comes to the bench press. You know, they think it's all chest and arms. Yeah, and so if you're not training your shoulders as a raw lifter, then you're going to struggle a lot. And, you know, that's some of the things that that mentality of look, don't don't really work your shoulders or... Uh, just focus on your top end lockout. It kind of came from equipped lifting. Um, not to mention the uh, the whole bar path is different. Um, you know, for a, a long time you hear people move move the bar in a up and down, up straight up and down line when you're bench pressing, straight up and down. But that's fine if you're equipped, because you know you gotta like. Because in equipped lifting, you have to like stay in this line. Like, if you get if you if you miss groove while wearing a bench shirt, it's generally pretty bad trouble for you. Yeah, but, like Andrew said, you're trying to stay in the same groove, and that groove, which some shirts are cut different, but you know true. nine times out of ten, it's, you're going to want to be in a straight line. Yeah, it's generally a straight. It it is if it's not straight up and down, it is much straighter than a raw bench press. Yes. So it might depending on how your shirt is angled, uh, you might not have a completely straight up and down bar path. Um, so 
there is that. But anyway, you would hear all this stuff straight up and down, straight up and down. And that's just not how it is when you're a raw lifter. When when you're raw, your bench press really it probably shouldn't be straight up and down. Your your bar pass should be kind of like a curve, like a kind of forming like a J almost. An upside down J. Yeah, an upside. Well, or is it a wait? No, it's more of a J if it was turned or rotated clockwise. No, counter. It's a. Kind. It's a parenthesis, kind of turned on its side. <laughs> yeah, it's a parenthesis, kind of on its side. Yeah, that kind of works. <laughs> so, like, because you start generally with the bar at eye level. Once you unrack it, the mm-hmm. bar's eye-ish level, nose level, something like that. And then when you bring it down. It goes to your chest, and it should be coming down kind of in a diagonal-ish path. And then when you press it up, it goes back, you back up to. Uh, it should also it should finish the press at your eye or nose level. So it's more of a diagonal-ish path, um, not really straight up and down. And we actually talked about this the other day, and when I say we, my dad was talking about it. And he was saying how a lot of that has to do with the angle of your elbow. Yeah, so you don't want to be super flared out because, you know, you're going to rip your pec out for one. And you don't want to be super close to your body. But if you're, if you're, if the angle of your elbow is about 45 degrees, then when you come down with the bar, you'll automatically go the way that you're supposed to go just because of the way that your elbows are. Yep. And, you know, that's part, the reason that's, that you that you, should, you have a more diagonalish bar path is um one since you are a raw lifter like you use your shoulders a lot and generally your shoulders are tucked and one if you, you do a straight up and down line that generally means your elbows are flared when your elbows are flared that puts a ton of strain on your pec and shoulder so you have to so that's why you tuck your elbows in some. And then when you bring it down in that diagonal path, your shoulders are in a much better position and they won't feel as much strain. And you can probably push with, use your, utilize your shoulders a little bit better and they probably won't feel like they're about to rip the rotator cuff and your pec's about to come curling up. And you can feel it too, like when you're trying to push it in a straight line. Like you can feel your lats and stuff engaging but once you get it so far off your chest, you know, nine times out of ten, if it's heavy weight, a lot of people will just pause and not go anywhere. When if they started on that arc and going back towards their head, they would complete the lift because they would get more upper back into it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which is what the shirt is taking away from you when you wear a shirt is all that shoulder. Yeah. And a lot of times you don't want to go back towards your head wearing a bench shirt because that shirt will, you know, throw it back towards your head and you can get seriously injured because that bar is flying towards your face. Yep. So you don't want to do that when you're raw bench pressing. And um, I also think that, uh, which this isn't a bad thing, but a lot of like board pressing and stuff is really big because of equip lifting. That's you would kind of train your lockout, so you would use boards to press off of. Mm-hmm. Um, which, you know, you can use that as a raw lifter, you know. It's helpful. Um, you got to work different areas of the press, but, you know, you can't just do that. But it's something, it's something you can throw in every now and then. Yeah, it's definitely good to work some kind of top end into your uh, routine. Yeah. Whether you're doing that or reverse bands, which I would, I would go with reverse bands over board presses. It that just depends true. on how far along you are in your training, you know. Because if you're a novice, you know you need to be doing everything. But if you've been lifting, you know, 10, 15 years, to where you know that your lockout's what's lagging, then yeah, you can you can spend a little time doing board pressing because your your other pieces are already in place. Yep. And so let's move on to uh, the squat. Um, squat suits are kind of uh, 
When you squat in a suit, it becomes very hip dominant. Um, and that's why you you see a, most of these equipped lifters uh, back in the day, like squatting in the super wide stances, like for extremely wide stances. And that, that's how you, that's just how you squat in a suit generally. All of, I thought about this while we were talking about the bench press, but all of these suits are made to help you get out of the bottom. So when you're in the hole of a squat, the suit's made to explode you out of the hole. So when you're at the bottom of your bench press, the suit's made to make you explode off your chest. And then deadlift, the same thing, which you don't get as much out of a deadlift suit just because you don't have any kind of stretch reflex going on. Yep. But anyways, that deadlift suits to help you explode off the ground. So when you're thinking about equipment, that's the main point is, is all the equipment's more or less getting you out of arguably, you know, the worst or hardest part of the event. Yeah. Um, so, you know, cause you know, the, I've never been in a squat suit, so I don't exactly know how it feels, but which I've never been in a bench shirt, but I did one of those slingshot Ram thingies. But, uh, like you see people squatting in those suits and like they're just sitting that's where a sit back sit back sit back and then when once you let that suit kind of guide you down and, and sit your hips at the right the right position then you can explode up and that's why they're able like you said to get so wide is because that suit is loading their hips and uh they can focus on sitting back because they actually have like a shelf to sit on mm-hmm. to where, you know, if you're raw, all you got your singlet and some muscles. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing to sit on when you get down in the hole. But yeah, that, that suit's compressing the lower you get and it's so tight to where it's, it's literally holding you up. Mm-hmm. And that's why like, that's another thing with raw lifters. You know, you see a lot of raw lifters trying to imitate these strong squatters, and they're going to super wide stance, really lo- low bar, wide stance. Um, and they're trying to squat like that, which that doesn't work for most people. And when we say wide stance, we don't mean like, a little bit beyond shoulder width. We're talking like sumo style kind of wide stance. Yeah. Like, like it's, really it's definitely wide, exaggerated. Yeah. Like a wide sumo deadlift stance. Squat. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's what we're talking about. It's, it just doesn't work very much for, for raw lifters. Um, and, and I think it also, you know, power lifters, you hear here. Oh yeah. Just work your hips, work your hips, work your hips. And a lot of, a lot of people would have weak quads, and so a lot of raw lifters would, you know, work their hips and stuff, but they wouldn't, their quads would be nothing. And so, I mean, that, that was similar to me. That's why, that's that's why for the longest time, and I still, and still today, you know, I didn't work quads a lot when I first started lifting. I just did a bunch of hip stuff, and that's why every time I get down to the bottom, my, my back takes over. And your back lean is also different between wearing a suit and being raw. Yeah. Because uh, pretty much everything with equipment, you want to be straight up and down. Mm -hmm. So like we were talking about, you know, the bench press, it's got to be in a straight line or you're going to throw that thing on your lap or on your face. Well, it's a lot the same way with a squat suit, which also has to do with that super wide stance. If you get pitched over too far forward or too far backwards in that super wide stance, you're either going to fall on your face or fall on your booty. Yep. And that's not good, for one. But that's another reason you need to work your back being raw. It's because you can actually use your back more in a raw squat. Mm Mm-hmm. So a lot of people think, you know, it's best to stay straight up and down and to squat down and use your hips. 
But if you have just the slightest lean when you're being raw, like once you get out of the hole, you can use use your lower back to where you know it's not compromising. You're not in a good morning position. Yeah. And get out of, you know, lock it out. Yeah. Like, it, when we're talking about lifting as much weight as possible, it makes no sense to try and squat in a way where you try and take away a whole muscle group. Right. Like, uh, if you're a raw lifter, you should be using your back in the squat. Now, um, it, you kind of do walk this fine line of using your back and then uh, your hip shooting up and getting in a good morning position. <laughs> yeah. Like, really, it becomes like a, a good morning and you just have to muscle the weight up. That ain't good. Mark Ripito can explain it way better than us, but <laughs> there's definitely a certain point to where, you know, a little lean's fine. But like Andrew said, good mornings are not good when you're trying to max out on meat day. Yeah. And like, if the bar is staying over your midfoot ish and it's not wobbling all over the place too much, like, I, like a little lean is not going to like be bad. It's probably going to help your squat. And depending on how your body's built, you know, in order to get to keep the ball over the midfoot, you you might have to lean. You know, there's some people that just have to have a little forward lean when they yep. start. So, for squat, you want to train your hips and your back and your quads. You want to train everything when you're raw. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then, I mean, as far as deadlift goes, I mean, you don't get a whole lot out of a deadlift suit. Like, big guys, I'm talking like 242 and up, may get 100 pounds out of a deadlift suit. Maybe 200, if even. Dude, I think 200 is pushing it. I don't know. If, I don't. I really don't know of anyone that even gets... I know... I think I've seen a couple people get 100, 110... 120 but uh, you don't get a whole lot out no nah. because like i said all these other uh lifts the squat and the bench you've got some kind of downward motions where you can build up you know energy and stretch reflex yep. with the deadlift if you can get your technique perfect i guess you can drop down grab that thing and let it rip which if you're wearing a suit that's your goal is to load that thing as quick as you can and explode. But yeah, if anything, especially if you're doing sumo and that equipment, it might be helping you get it. I don't know, four or five inches off the ground before that's just all you. Yeah. It's all, I don't get a whole lot out of, out of those deadlift suits. Um, but yeah, I think another. Well, I guess with with the oh, deadlift cool. is you still need to train your hips to where I guess that suits, you know, helping load your hips. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I, I wondered though, because we've had this phase, you know, quit lifting was really huge, then now it's kind of raw lifting. I'm willing to put a little a little bet that a quit lifting. I wonder if it will make a comeback when. A lot of people our age and into their 30s start getting really banged up and everything hurts and they they start they start putting on their hips are hurting so they start putting on a little little squat suit maybe just a pair of briefs a little pair of briefs and I wonder if in like 15 years 10 years if a quit lifting will make a comeback because people can't lift raw anymore like the people that have been training a long long time. It might, and especially with us living in the social media era, to where yeah. you got to keep your keep your cred and your fame going. I could see, I could see equip lifting coming back around. Yeah, that that'd be wild, full circle. Yeah, luckily, Iron Boy, we only do single ply. We don't get too crazy with it. 
Yeah, the multiply stuff's pretty wild. Yeah, man. When you're putting 600 pounds on your squat, that's just kind of ridiculous. It's kind of fake. Yeah. Man, equipped lifting is expensive, too. And you have to keep up with the technology or you fall behind in the pack. Yeah, like the different cuts of the suits, different materials, different designs. Like, I mean, you know, you're going to drop $130, $150 on a bench shirt. You're probably going to drop more on a squat suit, maybe. I don't know. It just depends on what you want to get. Yeah. Like everything, then, there's a... Oh, I had it in my brain and then it just left. There's a there's a suit for everyone. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> That's another thing about equipped lifting. These these shirts are expensive. But, like, I don't even know, like, what kind of shirt... Like, if I was to get a bench shirt, like, I have no idea what shirt fits my bench the best or what fits my squat. Like, I, I have no idea. Like, yeah. I, I ain't got a clue. You just got to try them all out, man. Yeah, let me drop $2,000. But. That's equipped lifting, folks. In a nutshell, we kind of hit on what we were trying to. Yeah, that's kind of a, that's kind of equipped lifting on a too lazy didn't read summary but yeah yeah equip lifting is definitely a richer power lifter sport with all the money that these suits are so and if you're listening to this and you're just starting out power lifting don't jump into that stuff until you have a good foundation yeah so and i would probably cents. recommend don't jump into that stuff Unless you know someone who has jumped into it. Yeah, because that'll definitely help the process. I don't know. I don't see much success walking into a commercial gym trying to put a bench shirt on by yourself and then benching. I don't know. Maybe it could happen. Yeah. You don't want to chop your head off at the YMCA. True. I ain't, I ain't doing equip lifting unless I got some people I know with me. And plus, you need to accomplish what you want to raw first anyway. Yeah. Definitely. But That about wraps it up for this one. Yeah, I think so. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, we appreciate every one of you supporting us. Every one of you giving both of your ears to listen to us. No matter if it's nighttime, daytime, or noontime. You're here for us, and we are here for you. And... Just to let you know, equip lifting is when you put on these big old suits and you're squatting and you're benching and you're deadlifting 500 pounds more than you normally do. And it also is going to cost you about $500 more than you normally spend in the gym. (laughs) Because my goodness, these things are expensive. Ladies and gentlemen, get the shirt that works for you. Stay raw if you want or go the equip pad. Don't chop your head off and please... Please do not use one of these YMCA personal trainers to help you put on one of these bad boys. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for us. Remember, stay cancer-free and and eat your bananas and get that potassium in your system. See ya. We're out. Thank you, everyone, who came out to our last competition. Up next is the Tar Heel State Powerlifting Championships in Belmont, North Carolina. We hope to see you there. Please subscribe and thank you for listening. Be sure to follow at CheckMyTotal on Instagram for all the latest updates.